Section 13.1.20-T, a highway safety institution conducts experiments in which cars are crashed into a fixed barrier at 40 miles per hour. In the Institute's 40 miles per hour offset test, 40% of the total width of each vehicle strikes a barrier on the driver's side. The barrier's deformable face is made of aluminum honeycomb, which makes the forces in a test similar to those involved in a frontal offset crash between two vehicles of the same weight, each going just less than 40 miles per hour. You are in the market to buy a family car, and you want to know if the mean head injury resulting from this offset crash is the same for large family cars, passenger vans, and mid-sized utility vehicles, SUVs. The data in the accompanying table were collected from the Institute study. So here is our table. We have large family cars, passenger vans, and SUVs. So we want to state the null and the alternative hypothesis for part A. Remember the null hypothesis is the statement to be tested. It is a statement of equality. The null hypothesis is assumed to be true until evidence is indicates otherwise. So the null is going to be the mean of the cars is equal to the mean of the vans, which is equal to the mean of the SUVs. Now the alternative hypothesis is a statement to be tested. It is a statement of inequality. The researcher is trying to find evidence for the alternative hypothesis and is a statement regarding the value of the population parameter. In this case here we can say that the alternative hypothesis is at least one mean is different from the others. Okay now the next thing here it says Normal probability plots indicate that the sample data come from normal populations. Now, are the requirements to use the one-way ANOVA procedure satisfied? Well, the first thing is, is that there are k sam simple random samples from k populations. The k samples are independent of each other. That is, the subjects in one group cannot be related in any way to the subjects in the second group. The populations are normally distributed. The populations have equal variances. This condition is met if the largest sample standard deviation is no more than two times larger than the smallest sample standard deviation. And the samples must be independent. So using StatCrunch, what we're going to do is we're going to round to three decimals. We're going to find the standard deviation of the different vehicle types. And what are they? So in order to do that, we're going to go to StatCrunch. We're going to go to Stat, Summary Stats of this data, and go to Columns. We're going to select all three and then find the standard deviation. So there's our standard deviations. So I listed it here. And so we can see here that the large family cars, rounding it to three decimal places, is 198.581. And let me go ahead and make sure that that is correct here with the correct information. So again, we have the standard deviation for the large family cars is 198.581. We know that the passenger vans is 189.641 for the standard deviation. And the midsize utility vehicles is 128.816. Now the largest sample standard deviation is no more than two times larger than the smallest sample standard deviation. That means the 198.581 is smaller than two times the smallest sample standard deviation. Now again, we also want to make sure that they're normally distributed and the populations have equal variances. So if we take a look at this data here, all right, we can, want, we can graph and find out what their box plots look like. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we take all three, and draw them horizontally, we can see that here they are with our box plots, which we'll be doing later on in this problem. So next, in part C it says, test the null hypothesis that the mean head injury for each vehicle type is the same at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level of significance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use StatCrunch to be able to determine this information. So again, we're going to go back to StatCrunch, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to Stat, we're going to go to ANOVA, and then we're going to select one way. We're going to select each in 
each item here. Okay, and then what we want to do is we're going to come down here and then we're going to select compute. And therefore, here is our information. So here's our data, which is the analysis of variance, and I'm going to go ahead and put that over here. So here we have our information. So in order for us to test, we need to do the following. We need to find the F test statistic for this data set, rounding it to three decimal places. So here is the F test statistic, and we're going to round that to three decimal places, and so therefore it's going to give us 0 0.388. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to find the p-value and then round it to four decimal places if necessary. Well, here's our p-value and it's at 0 0.684. So therefore, there is our p-value at 0 0.6840. Okay, and now we want to compare the p-value versus alpha. So we know that the p-value is 0 0.6840. We know that our alpha is at 0 0.01 and we can see that the p-value is greater than the significance level. Now, if the p-value is less than the alpha level of significance, we're going to reject the null. Otherwise, we do not reject the null. Now, remember that when the null hypothesis is rejected, there is sufficient evidence to support the alternative. When the null hypothesis is not rejected, there is not sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Since the p-value is greater than the alpha, we do not reject the null. So there is insufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Thus, we cannot conclude that the means are different at the 0 0.01 level of significance. Okay. And now next, we want to come back and draw the box plots of the three vehicles types, types to support the results obtained in Part C. So again, we've already done this, but we can go ahead and do this again. We're going to come in here and then graph. We're going to select box plot, select all three and then scroll down to draw boxes horizontally, and therefore here are our box plots. So taking a look at that, here are our box plots.